step in that, right? So it's a day of celebration and it's a day of joy and we're going to start by rejoicing not only in their faith but in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. First song, uh, let's stand and join together in Jesus Christ is risen today and let's bless him and we
order of worship. We worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Hallelujah. Great. Praise our God, all you his servants. You fear him, O small and great. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. Join me in prayer. God of peace, we turn aside from the hostile world, seeking rest for our spirits and light for our thoughts. We bring our work to be sanctified, our wounds to be healed, our sins to be forgiven, and our hopes to be renewed. In you there is perfect harmony and peace. Draw us to you and ease the tensions of our lives. Lead us out of the emptiness of this world and fill us with your peace. For Jesus' sake. It is right that when we gather before the Lord God Almighty, we recognize the fact that we haven't always been, as hard as we try, we haven't always been the people, the servants that God wants to be. As we ask for his forgiveness with the confession of sin. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of your life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ then through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together in the verses. supposed to be. It's an opportunity for these young people to share with you some of the things that they have grown to understand about their Savior, to share with you the faith that they have and the knowledge that they gain through confirmation class, 
to prove to all of you that they do actually know something about Jesus and, and their Savior, and that they're ready to be members of this church. It is also an opportunity to remind all of you, many of you who went through this same thing years ago, have probably forgotten half the things that they are going to say today. So it's an opportunity for you to be reminded of the things that you have forgotten. Here's the thing. If they answer every single one of these questions wrong, they will still be confirmed. They know these things. And if they forget, it's because of the pressure of the moment. All right? So, so let's get into it, all right? You guys ready? Don't be nervous, right? Don't be nervous. All right, so we've been studying for the last, some of you for two years you've been studying with me, right? What, what, is, what was our textbook, Olivia? The Bible, and whose word is the Bible? Do you have a passage that proves that? And what does that say? <laughs> All scripture is breathed by God. And what does that mean, Olivia? It means that it's God's word. And so what is that? Why is that so important to know that the Bible is God's word? What does it tell us about all the things that are in the Bible? They're all absolutely true, right? Verbal inspiration, right? What did we say the definition of verbal inspiration is? Remember? All right, who remembers? Go ahead, Nathan. God told the writer the exact words that he wanted them to write, right? So we know that we can rely on what the Bible says. Bible is divided into two main parts. What are the two main parts, Nathan? So, well, that's what you may teach. The two main parts are Old Testament and the New Testament. You know that, right? So let's start with, let's go through the books of the Bible, right? You want to start with the Old Testament? Exodus, Genesis, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Jude, Exodus, All right, stop there. Judy, you want to finish off the Old Testament?
Second commandment is God's name. Third commandment is remember the Sabbath day. What was the Old Testament Sabbath? Uh, who haven't I picked on much? Nathan, what was the Old Testament Sabbath? Saturday. Saturday. Why don't we worship on the Sabbath day anymore? Right, he fulfilled the Old Testament law. Why did we choose to worship on the Sunday? Because Jesus rose on a Sunday, so every Sunday is a celebration of Easter. So how do we keep the third commandment if we don't worship on the Sabbath day anymore? Singing his praises. We talked about prayer. Aiden, what is prayer? Talking to God. What are some things that you would talk to God about? Asking him for things, asking him for help, right? Why do we pray in Jesus' name? Why would our words not reach God? Because we're just saying. Okay, so how does praying in Jesus' name help us? He died to take away our sins, and so we can approach the Father in prayer, right? Fourth commandment. Should we skip the fourth commandment? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Olivia, the uh, fourth commandment says, Honor your father and mother. What promise does God make to those who, and it's not just talking about mom and dad. What are some other representatives that, that God places over us? Government, guardians, and bosses and stuff like that, right? What promises does God give to those who obey his representatives? What two promises does he make? Good life and a long life, right? That it may go well with you and you may enjoy a long life on the earth, right? When is the only time that God allows you to disobey your, your representatives? His representatives? Telling you to do something what? Yeah, that's against God's word. Do you remember a passage? <coughs> what was that? Mm -hmm. Very good. Acts five twenty nine. And what does that say? You must obey God rather than man. You must obey God rather than man. Right. Uh, fifth commandment is about life. Sixth commandment is about marriage. Seventh commandment is about the stuff that we have. Eighth commandment, how we talk to each other. Let's talk about the eighth commandment. All right. Judah, eighth commandment. Uh, what way? How do we speak? Lovingly. Lovingly and always telling the truth. Well, how does the Bible tell us to speak to one another? What's the passage? Do you remember the passage? No. Do you remember how it goes? Anyone remember? How'd it go? Speak the truth in love, right? So we speak nice about each other. What can you tell the truth about someone and still and still speak in an unloving way? What do we call that when you speak the truth about someone but it's an unloving way? <coughs> gossip. Well, we shouldn't gossip. God would not have us gossip. Right? Uh, ninth and tenth commandment talks about the attitude of our heart, right? <laughs> and that we should do it. We should be. We shouldn't covet. What is coveting, um, Nathan? What is coveting? Yeah, you want something that you can't have. Well, what uh, what attitude would God have us have towards all towards all the stuff that He has given to us? Contentment. Yeah. So I look at my life and I'm content and happy with the way that God has made me, the way He equipped me. Um, what is my example always? Uh, Aiden. Aiden, what is my example always of coveting? Because I'm not six feet tall like Aiden is, and so that's my covet. I covet him because I didn't make it to six feet. I always wanted to see it. All right, anyway. Okay, what do all of these commandments show about our hearts, Olivia? We are sinful. Um, all of that comes from something called original sin, right? The sin that we have, what's original sin? Olivia? The sin that we were born with. How in the world can you expect to be saved from Olivia? Okay, why does baptism save you? Because it washes away your original sin. Yeah, it washes away all your sin, including your original sin. How is it that water does that? What, is, what gives water the ability to wash away all your sin? We kind of went all around here. So she's thinking I'm a sheep and we're all over the place. What, how is it that you and I can expect to be saved? Okay, the Holy Spirit makes baptism work. Because Jesus what? He died on the cross to take away all of your sin. So you and I know that heaven is our home. So let's talk about God a little bit. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But how many gods are there, Aiden? 
one God, but we have these three persons. What word do we use to describe one God, three persons? Triune or Trinity, that's the word we've invented to describe that, right? Uh, what are some of the attributes of God, Aiden? Uh, yeah, what does it mean that he's omnipotent? All he's all powerful. Give me some other ones. Omniscient. Omniscient, what does that mean? All knowing. All knowing, give me some other ones. What does that mean? He's everywhere. Give me some other ones. Immutable. There's a big one. What's that mean? He doesn't change. That's right. Yeah. Give me some other ones. Loving. Loving. Gracious. Gracious. Just. Just. Yeah. Good job. What do we call. So let's talk about the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, right? Uh, What is Jesus' person, Judah? Do you remember? True God and true man. What is Jesus' office? Prophet, priest, and king. How is he your prophet, Judah? He speaks the word. How is he a priest? He sacrificed himself. How is he your king? He rules over All right. What is Jesus' work called? Uh, who knows? What is Jesus' work called? Remember it? What is it? Redemption. What does redeem mean? The Bible. And what did Jesus buy you back from? Our sins. Sins. Death. Death. And the devil. And how did he do it? By dying on the cross for all of our sins. Right? Holy Spirit, we talked about the Holy Spirit, and we talked a little bit about baptism, right? Let's talk about the Lord's Supper. You guys are going to have the Lord's Supper for the first time. Before you go, in, in the Lord's Supper, you receive four things. What are the four things you receive, Olivia? Body, blood, and blood. You got the hard ones, you forgot the easy ones. Oh, bread, and bread and wine, body, and blood, right? We receive Jesus' body, Jesus' blood, and his bread, and his wine. What blessings do we receive from the Lord's Supper, Nathan? Yeah, communing with God, forgiveness of sins, right? What should you do before you go up to receive the Lord's Supper? Give me some questions that you might use to examine yourself. Do you believe in God? Do you intend to to leave your sin and change? Yeah. Are you sorry for your sin? Uh, you go up and you receive the Lord's Supper and you're bound together. It's called communion because there are two sets of people, so to speak, that you are bound closer to. Who are you bound closer to? In communion? Yeah. The other Christians that you take it with and and God. You commune with God, right? When, you, when you're done with communion, what should you do? You go down, sit in your seat, and pray. And what should you pray? <coughs> Thank you for the forgiveness of your sins, for his body and blood, right? If you guys were to die tonight, where would you go? Aiden, where would you go? How do you know? Yeah, yeah. How do you know? How do you know? Yeah, because Jesus died to take away your sins. Satisfied? Give me uh, any other questions. Yes, Hannah. This one's for Judah. Okay. Why, why are you picking on Judah? Oh. How are you going to deal with peer pressure in high school? You just have to resist it. All right, okay. Satisfied? Yes, Isaac. Um, how are each one of you going to continue to help to give to the um, Church of Living Hope? All right, so how are you going to be blessing to the Church of Living Hope in the future? You guys want to, want to start? Olivia, why don't you start? Okay, volunteer. What do you want to volunteer to do? Okay, count the offering. Take the offering. Okay, talk about different ways. Aiden, do you have any ideas? Oh, it's praying for those that need it. Volunteering, good. Nathan? Satisfied? Yeah, 
Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, for each one of them, how do they live down to freedom? How do you? Um, he's going to ask the existence of God question. <laughs> yeah, so philosophers right now. Okay, so how do you know that God is real? This is a tough question. You want to try? Yeah. Okay, you have a natural instinct of morality. It's good and bad. That, that is actually the greatest, one of the greatest arguments in God. Yeah, good job. Anyone else? They have faith, yeah. The Holy Spirit has created faith in the heart that believes to. Good answer. Anyone else have an answer? Satisfied? Any other questions? One more. All right, one more. Follow up on that. All right. There's one other way that you can really here at Living Hope. Any of you have an idea? Oh, I'm lost. I'm confused. <laughs> coming to communion. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So if you need to come to communion. Sorry, I didn't you, you lost. <laughs> All right, anything else? I think they did a wonderful job. This has been It's been my pleasure to teach them. Uh, they are uh, interesting, talented, smart, a little bit sassy, and a lot of fun to teach them. So uh, I'd just like to, I asked them all to write an essay about this day, and uh, I'm going to read some excerpts from their essays to you. I'm not going to tell you who wrote each one, uh, but I just want you to hear from their own, from their own voice, their faith, okay? So this is what they wrote. God has always been there for me when I needed to talk to him, and I know that I can count on him to always listen to me. Jesus has done so many things for us, one being he forgives us for all of our sins. He gives you a new thought of mind. Even if you did the most horrible thing on the planet, he would still forgive, and that's only one of the reasons why I love him. This church makes me feel safe, and I know a lot of people here, and they are kind to me. So when I join this church, I know that I will be expected to be kind back. And if someone needs help or prayers to do that, because I will try to do whatever I can to help people. This church actually taught me things about Jesus, and I hope to continue to grow in my faith and learn about him. My Savior means so much to me. We sin a lot. We sometimes aren't even aware of the sins we, we commit. Luckily, Jesus died and forgave our sins, and that means a lot. He forgave, meaning no worrying about where we go after death. Death is just the gate to heaven for me. Jesus' death and resurrection also means no worrying about a sin I committed yesterday or the sins I will commit later. Jesus' death and resurrection means no stress. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can live happily knowing we have a purpose in life, and that purpose is to share the gospel with others. I also want to join because everyone is nice there. There are always people to talk to and stuff to do with them. There's lots of food after church, like cake, <laughs> cinnamon rolls, breakfast burritos, and much more. <laughs> All of you understand exactly. Anyway. <laughs>
join you together in our next hymn, which I can't remember what it is. Go, my children. This is not us singing to them. This is God singing to them and to you and me. So go, my children, with my blessing. stand up here and you're going to make a promise before God and before this congregation to be faithful to the Lord God even to the point of death. It's a serious promise. The promise that every one of us in here has made the minute that you follow Christ, what you are saying is you Lord and I will follow you wherever you go even to the point of where we can look death in the eye, spit in its face, and say, I am not afraid of you because I know Jesus Christ who conquered you by his death and resurrection. After the Sundays after the Easter, we've been talking about having a death-defying faith. Faith that, that does not cower and does not waver in the face of death because we know of the power of Jesus Christ and of his resurrection. I remember going to visit my my wife's grandmother and we were living overseas at the time and we were allowed to come back to the states once every two years 
to go visit her in her apartment and spend an afternoon with her. And at the end of it, we would say to her, well, Grandma, nice to see you. We'll be back in the United States in two years, and we'll come see you then. And she would say, I hope not. <laughs> and you're kind of like, oh, okay. It wasn't that she was defeated by life. It wasn't that she was so sick and tired of this world that she had it was that she was no longer afraid of what was going to come. <clears throat> she was 90 some years old, and the days that she was gonna be here on this earth were short, and she was Jesus, and she looked death in the face, spit in death's face, and said, I am not afraid of you because my Lord Jesus conquered you for me. Wow. How do you get to the point where when death comes, either, either because of a doctor's appointment threatens, or a dangerous situation, or catastrophe takes place, where you can death and not be afraid. We've been taking a look at John chapter 11, death of Lazarus and how Jesus deals with that. And last week we talked about the fact that our lives, including the timing of our death and the mode of our death, is all to the glory of God. And God uses all of that for His glory, not because He's not because He's uh, He needs our glory. He, he gets plenty of glory from the angels, and you and I aren't so good at giving Him glory in the first place. So He doesn't really need our glory. He wants his, us to give Him glory because He understands that when we do that, we have a relationship with Him. It means that we are going to heaven to be with. So he is jealous of his glory for our sake, not for his. Do you understand me? Are you with me? So it's not like Jesus is up in heaven going, man, they're not giving me glory. Man, those people are loving us. He knows what it means when we live our lives. So our life from beginning to end, including the timing of our death, is all to give glory to God as a witness to God's grace and God's mercy. Are you with me? Today we're going to see Jesus going to face death and Thomas going to face death without fear. All right? So John chapter 11, beginning uh, at verse 11. Jesus, the last time he had been in Jerusalem, they tried to kill him. They tried to stone Jesus the last time he was there. And now it, it, Lazarus had been sick. Now he died disciples that Jesus, that Lazarus would die. This is what it says. After he said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. The disciples said, replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. Then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe let us go to him. Then Thomas called Didymus said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Here's the word of the Lord. So Lazarus dies. And uh, he says, let's go back to Jerusalem, to Bethany and visit with Mary and Martha and go and find Lazarus, right? And the disciples are like, why are we going back to Jerusalem, Jesus? Last time you were in Jerusalem, what happened? They tried to kill you, Jesus. What you? <laughs> why did you wait three days to go up to Jerusalem? Why didn't you go sooner? Now you decide to go. This doesn't make any sense. They're just going to kill you. They're waiting to kill you, Jesus. We shouldn't go to Jerusalem. Amazing thing is Thomas says, you know what? Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go, even back to Jerusalem, even if it means that I'm going to what? Die with you. We give Thomas a hard time. What do we usually call Thomas? No. Doubting Thomas. And yet here we see a faith that looks death in the face and is not afraid. So you know what? I am going to follow Jesus anywhere it go he goes, whether it's uncomfortable, whether it's awkward, whether it's weird, whether it's dangerous, whether even if I should die, I will follow the Lord Jesus wherever he goes, because that is what he means. 
faith that they are going to confess in just a moment, the faith that we have confessed as we follow Christ Jesus, more than anything, is my relationship with Christ. When I was a boy, my dad served uh, three churches in the city of Lusaka, the capital of Zambia. And he also oversaw all the churches in the eastern province. And once a month, he would drive 500 miles from Lusaka to the eastern province to, to visit all the churches that he was supposed to be watching over. And as you go on the Great East Road, he'd go to towns like Kitwe and Kabwe and Kata, and he'd visit all the churches in those areas. Well, one time he was going along, and someone wanted a ride in, in Zambia. This is one of the rides. He did this. My dad didn't usually pick him up because it's not real safe, right? Well, this guy was sitting there, hailed my dad down to get him to stop, and my dad was just going to drive right by. Now he pulls an AK-47. Oh. Shattered the windshield, put two bullet holes in our front quarter panel, and busted one of the headlights. Comes back, and it's so cool. I can see a car all full of bullet holes. <laughs> A month later, it was time for my dad to go back out to the eastern province. There was a revolution taking place in the country of Mozambique, and the government forces were driving the rebels out of the country into Zambia. And uh, during that month, the rebels had been completely driven out of the country into Zambia. And so there were people with AK 47s all over the eastern province. And it came time for my dad to go back to visit those churches. And I watched him get into his car bullet holes and all, and drive back to the eastern province to visit the churches that were in the Death is not even choice. It says, I don't care what it is that God asks me to do, I'm going to do it. Even if it is uncomfortable, even if it is awkward, even if it is strange, even if it is dangerous, I will do it because that is what my God means to me. Sometimes, Sometimes we value life too much. Life is important. It's the gift of God. It's our time to serve Jesus. It's our time to get to know Jesus Christ. But sometimes we value it too much. If we love our life more than we love our God, it is what? We can't be gay. We love something more than God. Idolatry. We are not even to love our own life more than we love Jesus. We lay down our lives daily so that Jesus Christ can die to take away our sins and conquer sin and death on our behalf. Even my life is not more valuable than my relationship with Christ Jesus. How is it that my dad could get into that who Joe? and drive out there into that uh, rebel-infested area. How is it that Thomas could say, well, let's go up to Jerusalem with Jesus no matter what's going to happen? What gives them the ability to defy death that way? Well, let's take a look at some things that are in, in the text there. Thomas could go up to Jerusalem because who's going to go with him? Yeah, so it's easy for Thomas because Jesus was right there. Jesus was going to take care of me. He didn't have to worry because Jesus could protect him, right? If Jesus was with me, then I could do, go do whatever, right? Aiden, what does omnipresent mean? He's everywhere. So no matter where you go, where is he? He's with you. He's with you how long? Forever. Is he powerful? How powerful? You thought the examination was done, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's omnipotent, right? What does that mean? And he can do whatever. Is there any danger, anything that is more powerful, more that, that so powerful that Jesus, that God can't handle it? There isn't. And you use a big fancy word, immutable. What does that mean? He's always the same. So if he's always with you and he's powerful enough to handle anything that there is and he never changes, then no matter what you face, what? He will be with you. And so do you have to be afraid of death? Be afraid of death. I don't have to be afraid of nothing. I know the power of the Lord God. I know His presence with me always, and that can never, ever change. Notice when Mary and Martha were in their darkest hour, that's when Jesus said, It's time for me to go and 
When our life gets to be especially dark, or especially difficult, that's when we look to Jesus to shine the light. For his love to come flooding into our hearts and our lives. I know that in my darkest hour, in the most difficult time that I face, I know that God and his love will come. And he will take care of all of us. Will always be with me. My darkest hour, he will come with his power and his love. And the last thing, notice what Jesus calls death. What does he call it? Sleep. It's not sleep, but it's like sleep. Because it means that you and I, even though we die, what's going to happen? So even if I die, and I die in faith in Jesus Christ, what do you and I know? That we will live. So I don't need to be afraid of death. I don't need to be afraid of anything, because I know that Lord God, through faith in Jesus Christ, I know that the Lord God will raise me again. Death is nothing but a sleep for us who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So how is it that we can ask these young people to stand up here in front of this congregation moment and say, I will keep this faith even to the point of death. The promises that he has made. The victory that he has won. The death defying thing comes from knowing Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's stand and join together in our next song, uh, Living Hope.
continue by bringing our offering. <laughs> brothers and my sister, through his gracious plan, Jesus brought you to us to be a part of this congregation, to hear God's word, to grow in faith, and to become faithful servants with us. We are grateful to the Lord for the blessing of bringing you to you. Jesus said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that's in it. As the Lord has instructed us, we have been baptized and will be baptized. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess them before my Father and Mother. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all this, joyfully in the name of the Lord. Answer the questions I shall now ask you. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of his congregation, acknowledge the blessings which God gave you in your baptism? If so answer, I do. Do you believe in God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? That's the answer I do. Can you guys hear them in the back? Yeah. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? So answer, I do so intend with the help of God. You hold all of the scriptures, Old and New Testaments, to be the inspired word of God, and confess that the teachings of the Lutheran Church drawn from them, as you have learned it from the Catechism, to be faithful and true, so answer I do. Olivia and Judah, Aidan and Nathan, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we will have certain expectations of you, and you may rightly have certain expectations of us. You may rightly expect that you will be faithful in making use of opportunities to grow in your faith, in worship and Bible study and regular participation in the Lord's Supper. And also expect that you will be faithful in using your talents and treasures to support the spread of the gospel in this place and around the world. I therefore ask you, will you support with your prayers, time, talents, and offerings the work our Lord has given to living hope? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. To enter our fellowship, you may rightly expect that we and your fellow members will provide you with opportunities for growth in your faith share with you the blessings God has given to us as his church, and be by your side in times of decision and crisis, as well as times of joy and celebration. And from me, your pastor, you may expect honest teaching of God's word and a willingness to listen. These are the privileges and benefits that membership in our congregation involves. You now desire to be a partner in the gospel with us at Living Hope Lutheran Church, and so answer yes with the help of God. And you, brothers and sisters of Living Hope, who have been reminded of your responsibilities 
do you accept Libya and Judah, Aiden and Nathan and, uh, as your brothers and sisters in Christ? If so, answer yes with great joy. Yes, yes with great, great joy. joy. And do you promise to minister to your brothers and sisters with your concern, your support, your prayers and fellowship? If so, answer yes in Christian love. Yes, yes in Christian love. Based on these promises, we welcome you as our brothers and sister at Living Hope Lutheran Church. We dedicate ourselves to be a blessing to you in the same way that the Lord has sent you to be a blessing to us. Olivia Spencer, to the Stern Hagen, welcome. Nathan Seaver, welcome. Nathan Wood, welcome. Thanks for having you guys here this right, Neil and receive the blessing of the Lord. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and of fear of God. class. Let's give a face of congregation. Let's give them a round of applause. Let's bow our heads and say a prayer for our new congregation. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our prayers for today. Uh, special prayers have been requested for um, uh, birthdays. Allie, who is here with us, is celebrating a birthday today. And Nancy, this is a family friend or family member of uh, Dr. Miller. And Cindy has a birthday this week. Um, we also pray for the twins. We continue to pray that they would gain weight and become healthier. Nancy, who has a high eye issue that needs to pray for healing there. Denny, whose appendix ruptured, uh, and they're having trouble, uh, just need healing there, right? And also, Tammy, our sister, will have certain needs. So we pray for them. Any other prayer requests today? Yes, Jay. Um, can we pray for Vicar Alan Alike in Uganda? 
He's, he needs a hundred dollars to get a bicycle because it takes him too long to get out to the villages. So I would pray that God would prosper him and give him the money he needs for his bike. Okay. Yes, uh, Wayne. Okay. There's a group of people who lost their house in New Mexico to the fire. Uh, there's two pastors in Ukraine to pray for, especially one is Pastor Simeyev, and I can't pronounce the other guy's name, but they are taking folks out of Kiev and Kirkiv into Poland and bringing supplies back in. Pastor Simeyev said they can't use the same road every day. They never know how it's going to go Good. for their safety. Okay, we'll pray for them. Yep, Carmen. I want to pray for one of my co-workers. She got a really bad of COVID. Okay. What's her name? Sandra. Sandra. <coughs> yes. Let's stand and join together in prayer. come to you with some special prayers and we ask for your blessing, especially on those who are dealing with health issues. Pray, Lord God, for healing. Pray, Lord God, for strong faith in the face of, of adversity, Lord God. Help them not to shrink, but to run to you, to know that you love them, that you will heal, that you will take care. We especially think of the twins, Lord God. Pray that they would continue to grow and be healthy and gain weight. We pray for Nancy, who, who is struggling with some eye issues. Pray for healing, Lord God. Pray for Denny, whose appendix ruptured. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless the medication that he receives and heal him. Pray for our sister Tammy as she goes into surgery. Guide doctors, guide nurses. Bless that, Lord God. It may all go well. Um, we, we pray for Sandra, who's going to have uh, cancer surgery as well. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless her surgery, Lord watch over her and guide doctors and nurses. We pray for Sandra, who's, who's deep battling COVID. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with her and bless her recovery. All those who are struggling with their health, Lord God, we commit to your care and ask you for you to take care of them and bless them. We also pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are carrying out your work, uh, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we ask for your blessing on them. We think of the vicar in Uganda. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless his work and open ways for him to carry out the work that you have given him to do. And the pastors in Ukraine, we pray, Lord God, that you would bless their work as well and keep them safe. Uh, pray for all of them, Lord God, that you would bless their work and that, you would, that your gospel might be preached, Lord, and keep them safe from harm and make their job easy, Lord. We give you thanks for, um, for the years, for blessing Michael looking forward to his graduation. Thank you, Lord God, for giving him the mind and the energy and the will to carry it out. Pray that you bless him in his new endeavors, Lord God. And 
Uh, Aaron, thank you, Lord God, for all those parents who raised up their children in the way of the Lord. Thank you for giving them wisdom and patience. Pray that you would continue to bless their children and the faith that they have. Keep them strong in you, Lord God. And for him who is, humanly speaking, is facing death, we pray, Lord God, that you would be with her, and if it is your will, that you would heal her. But if not, we know, Lord God, that you are with her. Strengthen her faith, bless her family, help them to find comfort in your love and your promises in the empty tomb, Lord God. Pray for the people in New Mexico who lost their homes. Pray, Lord God, that you would watch over them. Uh, ease their lives, restore their lives, Lord God. Be with them. Help them to know that you are there. You understand what they're going through. That you would bless them and take care of them. Pray that same thing for Dave and his family, Lord God, as they try and figure out what to do. Bless them, Lord God, with your wisdom and spirit. Guide them in the way that they should go uh, as they try and take care of their parents, Lord. Finally, we give you thanks for the years of life that you have given to our sisters, Allie and Nancy and Cindy. Pray, Lord God, that you continue to bless this new year, uh, continue to bless them and bless them in this new year. Um, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Follow along with your The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In the past, He spoke to us through the prophets, but in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, who is the radiance of His glory. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. To Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, we praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. He was betrayed to bread when he had given thanks he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take me, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Pour out for you for the forgiveness of all of you. And this is you drink it. Peace of the Lord be with you always. All things are now ready. We're going to start with the confirmants and their family, so I'll invite them forward first, and then we'll communion the rest of the congregation. There are three hymns that we will join together in drink.
your body and blood for the Lord Jesus strengthen you, keep you in the true faith until life everlasting, or that peace with you. blood strengthen you, keep you in the true faith until life everlasting, or that peace with God, your sins are forgiven.
Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with joy. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his face. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. And welcome especially to our guests, our visitors. Thank you for coming to worship with us today. One more song. Mother's Day next week, fellowship team is going to provide carnations, so uh, it says we celebrate mothers. Um, Workday is wrong, so on the back where it says save the date, it's the 14th of May, not the 20th of May, I'm not sure how I got that wrong, whatever, it's 14th of May, and there are new meditations, so if you use meditations, they're on the brochure rack, they in the entry Anything else? We're also having a cake for Mother's Day next week as well. Okay, so there will be a cake next week for Mother's Day uh, as we celebrate God's gift to Mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yoga, yes. Um, tell me the date you get. Saturday at 9. Saturday at 9, if you'd like to do participate in a Mother's Day Christian Yoga, right? There's a brochure on the, on the board in the back. Right? Or talk to Allie. Allie, you can raise your hand. She is the yoga. She's a yoga instructor. Anything else? Thank you. Brad. 
Yes, Jane. Our medical supplies got to Poland and are being taken today into Ukraine. Yeah. All right. So then we So our supplies to help out our brothers and sisters in Ukraine are in Poland. So hopefully they make it all the way to our brothers and sisters. Anything else? All right. Thank you all very much for coming. Let's stand and join together in our last song going on in peace.